Dr. Paul, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Not too bad. How are you? Yeah, I'm I'm doing good. Excellent. Uh, sorry about my bad line last week. <laughs> hey, it happens. We appreciate you try you making the effort and and uh, and going above and beyond. <laughs> uh, this week, I think um, uh, one of my engineers in India will be joining. It's late for him too. So let's see. He should have a much better line than I had. Awesome. Well, good luck. Let's let's hope it goes well. We're looking forward to uh, to meeting him and, uh, and you know going from there. <clears throat> yeah, so he he's uh, he's having a look at setting up board farm just to get an oh. idea about what it all is. Stick it into a, an open WRT router or something. See if we can get it running. Do something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's uh, it's been on We're... his task. Go on. Oh no! I was just gonna say that that he and I are in about the same spot right now. That, yeah. that I've, I've kind of gotten, yeah, just uh, actually getting to the point of putting it together, right? And, okay. Uh, installing it and, and giving it a, a whirl. I think there were there's gonna be some. Um, I'm gonna propose some changes to Mike. Um, so I'd love to work with uh, with um, you know the the folks that you have and. And collaborate sure. on anything like that because i'm sure you know if i see a problem or i see a change that should be made it, it's very likely that other people see it or vice versa so yeah absolutely yeah definitely probably wait a few more minutes hello there jeremy can't hear you jeremy Yeah, it happens. Jeremy's sulking. <laughs> Who can blame him? <laughs> Just one of those days, I guess. Oh, do I do that again? Trying to figure out undock. Oh no, that's not what I wanted. No, that's certainly not what I wanted. No, no. That's what I wanted. All right, can, you, can is my screen viewable? It is. It is indeed. Okay, good. We'll wait a few more minutes and uh, go from there. Sure. I uh, as I missed part of last week, um, uh, mm -hmm. my colleague. Uh, told me that um, Ansible was being considered as, or potentially proposed as a uh, tool. I'm not quite sure. I don't. Yeah, I haven't used Ansible before, so um, I guess while we're waiting for people, um, yeah, a recap on that would be good. Yeah, definitely. So, um, so for you know the obviously what you're what you may be doing with Borg Farm is probably going to be a little different than what we're trying to do. We're trying to, what we're trying to do is figure out a better way to, to manage a bunch of these um, mm -hmm. particularly, but, but starting obviously with one and I'm using Ansible um, because you're going to have a, you know, an upstream device, a downstream device, a device that's mm -hmm. controlling that, that someone has access to that's kind of like controlling and connected to the router. Um, and then, you know, potentially also, uh, the, the firewall that you're connecting to could be managed as well. So how do you actually have a tool that manages all that in mm -hmm. a, in a, in a simple mechanism? So I'm, I'm considering Ansible. I've heard lots of good things. I've played, I'm playing with it. Um, made some progress so far. I like it for the most part. It's a, it has a little, quir some quirks as I think most anything does, mm -hmm. but it, it seems to make it relatively simple to, you know, get, uh, systems you're involved in in a in a good in a standard state. Now, obviously, if you had like it's not as good as you potentially could use it for this, but it's not as good as like say, um, Mike had Mike Anderson had recommended 
uh, it'd be it'd be great if instead of having an upstream and downstream actual device, this was just connected to a computer that was running VMs. You probably yes. could do, you you obviously would do better if you had that. In our case, it was more more a situation of if we wanted something that was straightforward to do a prototype and also low mm -hmm. cost. If we weren't exactly sure what type of uh, computer we would want, but at the same time, is um, you probably could use Ansible for that too, um, mm. in in getting the VMs into a state that that you'd work with. But you don't have to. I mean, it would be simpler, obviously, if it was just you could you know start up a VM and it was in the proper state as is um, for all that testing. Okay. But um, hope that makes sense. But yeah, I mean, I'm gonna be. Uh, as I as I go forward on this process, I'm going to be uh, documenting it as much as possible, and I and I think it's it's gonna it's gonna work pretty well. Good. Uh, Ansible is is pretty nice. It has the uh, it's it's idepotent. It's it when it runs, so it, it it's really nice in the fact that you know you can run the same you know script. It's not a script, but you know a description over and over, mm -hmm. and it's not going to break anything. Right, um, which is which is really convenient, I think. Well, it is uh, five after, so I think we can get started. Um, I think this is this is everyone for this week. So um, thank you uh, for coming uh, and uh, to the meeting. Um, as always, the meetings are recorded, and I'm going to post them. But if anyone has any concerns, they can they can get to me, and uh, uh, obviously. Um, Paul and I have been talking about the, uh, the work I've been doing, um, on, on you know, trying to, to build a, a, a larger board farm and, uh, the issue of making it remotely accessible, but, um, we can either continue with that or, or we can talk about anything, uh, you know, see, find out, uh, what everyone else is doing and, and go from there. So, yeah. Sure. So <clears throat> as, um. Uh, Nikhil doesn't seem to have joined. Um, I might have to fire a few questions off, which we discussed um, last week sure. while I was over there. But sure. uh, I think probably first, I've, I'm keen to know yeah, how you're getting on with the, the, the board farm that you're setting up. And then I guess I can raise the questions after that. Yeah, it, it's it's going pretty well. Um, I, you know, I've had some things this week that have been slowing me down. Um, and part of it's Ansible stuff, and part of it is, um, I'm having some quirky behavior with the actual device under test, the router that I'm connecting to. Um, mm -hmm. but that is more of a, I have to work that out with uh with Mike at uh, QCA. Uh, but it's going pretty well. Um, it, you know, if if I wasn't trying to do it in a way that is trying to be as repeatable as possible. It would probably go a little quicker, but, um, <laughs> you know, uh, it, it is, uh, it's going, it, I think it's going, going in a good direction. So I would have to say probably in the next couple of weeks, I, I should be at a, at a solid point where I can say, okay, we can have people connect to it and, and see where we go from there. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah. Cause there's two, two main things, I guess, <clears throat> from our side that are interesting. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, one is, uh, for the various changes that we're making to uh, OpenWRT. I actually don't know what that in involves at the moment, but I, I'm sure there may be some that we want to upstream. Um, you know, having a, being able to kind of log in, even if there's only one device attached, you know, just to, to use the board farm that you have and, uh, and run the tests or any tests that are available. So getting some, yeah, some idea about, uh, <clears throat> what steps are involved in that? Cause I guess there's the, there's a setting it up so it's accessible, and then there's a bunch of tests that are already defined or need to be defined. Um, um, well, board farm, you know, there are some that are defined. Um, obviously, it, it is it was QCA based, so I'm not sure. I think most of them are probably going to be pretty well. Um, uh, are going to be pretty generic, but uh, they're there are probably going to be some that are just, you know, that, that, you know, you find they didn't consider something and it actually is just actually unique to QCA. Yeah, um, yeah. There also is a, a few pieces of uh, support that you have to, like, basically they have classes that define um, 
uh, like the type of router you have, because obviously there are, you know, unique connection for things mm -hmm. and, and where, how do you, how do you actually connect to U-Boot and things like that? And mm -hmm. I had done a brief discussion with Mike on how we could make that easier to uh, expand. Um, I, what I'd like to do is to put all the router uh, class files uh, into a particular folder. So basically all you would have to do is say, um, you have uh, basically add your support stuff to this folder and say hmm. what router model you support. And then mm -hmm. as long as that person enter, enters the router model, it'll just grab it from there and it knows how to do it. Instead of right now, there's some stuff where you have to like kind of, kind of uh, uh, hard code it into like, yeah board decider file which is inconvenient and not really great for expanding long term um but but i you know i talked with mike and, and we kind of are generally in agreement on how we could how we could do that in, the, in a way that makes it a little bit easier to uh build upon i mean it's not difficult now it's just things to think about and and you know <clears throat> let's make it easy as easy as possible definitely um, so there's a, there's a there's a couple things there. I, I think that uh, in Mike would agree it's it's very much uh, built to their scenarios. So there's going to be some level of uh, expansion and and uh, and you know add-ons for things like uh, power uh, powers uh, connecting to power devices. Mm -hmm. um, that's going to be another thing that's going to have to be. Uh, like we have support for one particular uh, remotely accessible power device mm -hmm. right now. Um, that's obviously, if you have a different one, it's not going to work. Um, sure. Presumably though, there could be like a, a wrapper for, you know, absolutely uh, power on port X. <laughs> yes. And then we can just fill that underneath whatever we have. Absolutely. And, and we would incur in whatever we would come up with. I mean, obviously there's going to be a lot of, whatever i mean if you're using it i'm sure you're use, not using something that is like super custom of, for some sort of uh, power connecting i would assume that other people have a similar uh piece of software or a sim have similar hardware out there it'd be you know we would encourage uh everybody to you know submit their changes as much as possible mm -hmm. um but yeah i need to talk to mike mike a little bit more about that i was hoping he'd keep come to this meeting but um Guess he could have made it, but yeah, I mean, I think that that'll be, you know, that that's kind of a an area in in which uh, there needs, I don't know if there needs to be, but I I think there should be some some uh, improvements, and I think I mean Mike and I are both in agreement that kind of where it needs to go and how how to get there. So okay, um, I could carry on, but I noticed there's. Two people. Maybe we should check if they're actually. Yeah. Uh... Can you hear us? Ah. Yeah. Can hear you, Jeremy. Yep. <laughs> so, well, we've we've resorted to Anton's phone. Uh, we've we've <laughs> your screen, but I don't know. It, for some reason, Fuse was refusing to use the mic on my laptop. Um, so. We, oh, we're, I'm sorry. <laughs> we were talking to you, but it uh, just wasn't going anywhere. Um, so we, we've been quietly listening. Um, Oh, okay. Well, so there's myself and Anton here. Hi. Hey there. <laughs> so I was just uh, I was just talking about tests. <laughs> we we had a quick look while I was over in Pune uh, of the tests that were available, and uh, a very quick look. And this is by no means uh, after any extensive <laughs> review, but we did notice there were a couple of things which instantly kind of hit me. Which was one one was um, actually, how do I get some information about what all these tests actually do? <laughs> and the second one is, um, well, for the code that we did look at, there did seem to be specific Atheros uh, uh, stuff in there. So I think that probably goes to the point you were just talking about, Eric, about um, trying to weed some of that stuff out. Obviously, it was designed by them, built by them. So not a big surprise. But uh, yeah, sure. I, I think the best th best way to do this, because uh, obviously, I mean, if you guys review it and then you know you come back here and then we we think about it. is is um is it would be great if 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 you guys would just file if you would file bugs on there okay you know, just say hey this is this is uh atheros specific because because mike's 
super supportive of everything we're doing and he wants to make this as <clears throat> as accessible but obviously it, it's kind of like you know when you're when you're not you know it's hard to look at things from from a different point of view absolutely anyway. yeah so, yeah and there's a lot there to cover as well i guess yeah so it, it's <clears throat> good it's good to actually get a list of these things so we can kind of work through them because you know i'm going to be working with mike and we're going to have anybody who wants to get involved to to work through these things Okay, so. and do you want us to use the mailing list for that, or? I think I think for that, uh, for for board farm would be to use the the actual board farm repo, the the issues oh, okay. on there. Because Sorry. That fits there. No, no problem. I mean, if if there's something that's not like an issue or a question that like more of a like, hey, how should we handle this kind of thing? It might we could have a discussion on the list too, but okay. uh, for I think for the actual like, hey, this is Athra specific. This should be changed. That would be more of uh, it'd be really appropriate for that. Great. Either way, it'll be good. But it's good to just get. It, it's easy to have it in one place. So. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Okay, and and in terms of contributions to the test suite, I uh, you know I have no plans to add anything at the moment. I need to understand what's there, but. Uh... Oh, of course, yeah. How would that work? Would we push straight there to get reviewed, or? Yep. Okay. Yep, straight there. I mean, if you, if you want to, you can email the mailing list and and uh, um, and say, hey, I I did that too. But I mean, no, I think that's the that's the best way to do it. Um, there's, I think there's some contribution guidelines there too, just kind of like you know what you need to do, but. It's really minor. You just need to do a signed off by, which is uh, the same as any, like if you were contributing to OpenWRT or the kernel, um, gotcha. a signed off by line. So yeah, I think that's about it. Okay. <clears throat> that were my main questions there, I think. Awesome. Awesome. Jeremy and Anton, anything from 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 your your guys' end? I I don't know if you've got anything. I, we were just saying, and Anton is very much just just listening in and just getting trying to get up to speed, really. Um, yeah. I don't want to put words in your mouth. Yeah, I mean, for for me, it's sort of yeah, still uh, trying to understand, you know, how how you guys can help really in, in the context of this call. And, and at the moment, nothing specific. I mean, uh, previously we did mention that we are uh, working towards upstreaming uh, mm -hmm. to OpenWRT um, that works ongoing. Um, you know, Jose and his team are involved in that. Um, so nothing, I don't think anything's gone up just yet, but um, it's, it's a work in progress. But I don't think I've got any specific questions for today. Um, okay. I I was in a meeting this morning that uh, you know the upstreaming for Open WRT was just it's it's an item on the agenda. So I, I I'm not not that close, but en enough to know that yeah it, it's uh, I think phase one is structuring uh, everything and getting it into a position that we can. Um, mm -hmm. upstream and I think that that's made pretty good progress there's been sort of a because there are sort of multiple projects all sort of coming together and using the same repository there's a little bit of uh, oh okay uh, what are we doing with this how do we separate this out how do we manage this so uh, there's sort of been a fair bit of that kind of work in the background before the guys can cleanly start pushing stuff upstream mm -hmm. so that that is progressing i don't think that there's the, the, the one question i asked this morning was you know uh are there any um, any issues any undecided areas or is it kind of we've got a plan now and we've just got to just get on with it and mm -hmm. it, it seemed to be the latter that we know what we're doing it's just now getting on with it um, <laughs> mm -hmm. well that's good i mean that yeah, yeah. that's awesome yeah. I was in a, a separate meeting, but with some of the um, other team members who are involved in the same topic. I, w 
I met with yeah. Chris this morning right. uh, for the Crota meeting mm -hmm. um, and pretty much got the same impression. You know, we've been sort of proto prototyping um, the uh, structure for the repos that we would require in order to break the, uh, the big sort of super patch, <laughs> which wouldn't go up uh, into uh, more... Uh, reasonable uh, a set of patches which we can actually submit um, mm -hmm. so it's pretty much as Jeremy said the guys are making good progress with understanding how to solve the problem it's just the doing now definitely definitely well I mean that's good um, yeah it, it's it's good to uh, to not get into that point where, where you have to do that to separate that super patch apart but I mean once you get there yeah. I mean, that's what you have to do yeah yeah, the, the, um, the, the reasons behind that really is because of, uh, you know, not already having a, a process in place whereby mm -hmm. we could avoid that in the first place. But one, th this is uh, the breaking down of one big patch is kind of a, um, it's addressing the, the technical debt, if you like. Mm -hmm. uh, once this is done, then we'll have a, a process and uh, a setup which would avoid the need to do that going forward. Awesome. That's great. Yeah, that's uh, that sounds a lot like uh, like the QCA experience too. It, it's very interesting how this seems to happen. Uh, you know, similar experiences between companies. Yeah. Um, just just getting you know getting the kind of like the open source mindset and and understanding how process works and 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 putting it into a company. It, it seems like it's very common. I, I'm not sure. Uh, what why that is but it's it just is what it is it's interesting is there any you know anton is there anything that you mentioned like is there anything wondering what this call could do is there anything you, you that jumps out at you that that like hey this group could do to help uh or this group or purple in general it could do to help with uh with uh anything that you're doing um i mean yeah there, there's there's one thing which is perhaps slightly outside the immediate topic of, of you know, w, open WRT. Yep. That has to do with um, us looking at um, open sourcing and governance around open sourcing. Um, okay. I, I think I didn't, I'm, I may have mentioned this briefly about three weeks ago. Um, mm -hmm. And we've, uh, we, we want to set up um a process obviously we want to have some governance and some guidelines for the community mm -hmm. um, but we also want to avoid putting too much red tape in the way uh, and taking too much time to set up something until we really know what the reaction from the community is like so yep. cur currently a few of us are looking at how other <coughs> how others do this um, Mm -hmm. and uh, sort of bringing our thoughts together on how we'll do this for uh, for the code which we will be open sourcing uh, in the context of the creator work. So okay. I don't know if uh, you have pointers or guidelines. This might not be the right meeting for that discussion, but uh, that, that yeah. comes to mind. If you want to email me separate, uh, I actually do do this uh, as a um, outside of my purple work. I do consulting on like governance and helping people, um, you know, build open source projects and and come up with the governance process and things like that. So I'm happy to happy to do that as part of my purple work. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll contact you separately on that. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. Awesome. I think uh, somebody new joined, although yeah. I don't. Oh, yeah. It's one of ours. I... <laughs> yeah, that's uh, <laughs> Nick L. He did say he would join. I think he's having issues with the audio. Uh... Yeah. Yeah, I don't see an audio, but yeah. So. When... <coughs> Nick Hill's uh, part of Paul's team. Uh, he's based in our Puna office. Um, so oh. he's done well to. Uh... Stay up this late. <laughs> Stay up this to, to join. Yeah, I Hopefully. hope he gets, I hope he gets his mic working. I'd hate for him to to join to stay up and then not be able to join the meeting. <laughs> yeah, I think he's he's skyping me now. He says um, audio is not available. That's strange. That's uh, weird. Technical issues. I think he's using the browser um, rather than the the application. Although I use the browser too, and it seems fine yeah. to me. 
I, ironically, I think I normally use the browser, and it's the this time that I use the application that I seem to have. Yeah, this is uh, it's funny. I've been this has been kind of like a passion for like the last I don't know, probably three years trying to figure out a good uh audio conference uh video conference tool for yeah. for open source and this is like by far the best one and it's still not great but I mean, it has the advantage that you can use it in browser with webrtc which means you can actually use it on linux and yeah it's mm. it, there is it, this is a, a really difficult area to try to get something that works well with so to be fair it, it's it's done pretty well in that we've got uh, we've actually got um anton's phone here for our audio <laughs> oh yeah uh, and so it's it's pretty clear and <laughs> not distorted so you know yeah we we just down when jeremy's uh, computer was refusing to uh, allow us to speak to you i'll just download the app and that seems to have worked okay but, awesome uh, there we go yeah options that's great Eric, Eric, I uh, the, the, the sort of the any input that I wanted to really just throw in here. I mean, to be honest, mm -hmm. everyone else is uh, is IMG, so it's not really so much news uh, for them. But I, uh, I just thought, well, there's there's, there's a bit of um, uh, news, of course, around imagination technologies uh, at the moment, and uh, just uh, from a from a purple perspective and our involvement in Open WRT, I just mm -hmm. uh, thought it was a good opportunity just to uh, mention that you know there's there's no no particular changes uh, in what we're doing. Only to say that we are we're actually now closer to Tony King Smith. He is more involved in in our group. And so, awesome. Uh, that, that, that's actually a positive. In oh yeah. Ice's involvement, uh, as you're aware, in, in purple with with us as well. So um, it's it's sort of aligning a, a, a lot of uh, different pieces here. Mm -hmm. So just the, just worth mentioning. That's awesome. Yeah, is it is this that's okay to be on the recording? Yeah, no, I, I think that that's a um, it's just a, a positive thing. I don't think okay. it's uh, anything particularly sensitive there. Okay, uh, just want to make sure. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Uh, okay. Well, that's great. I mean, yeah, he's uh, yeah, Tony is he's on the board and is very supportive of uh, of of a lot of the open source work. So it, we're I'm glad to glad to know that there, there's going to be more of a connection with uh, with your work and and creator and uh, open to BRT. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Eric, uh, going back to the Ansible subject. Yeah. Um, just wondering whether we would need to um, start using that tool or whether it's just something you're using at your it, end to control. Um, I, no, you don't have to do that. No, this is, this is more my um, – part of it was even with uh, – you know, I've got three – we're actually using three Raspberry Pis uh, because they were really cheap and inexpensive and well supported. We knew, um, and we're using those for uh, the various pieces connected. And it was more like, how do I get all these things into a state and make sure that I've actually recorded all the the things that need to be done, and to actually manage it. And even to do that by hand was just it was becoming an issue where it was just like this is going to get really hard to remember i did all the pieces and it's recorded as right. to how i got to the state i'm in um no you you can use anything you want to manage your various devices uh that's just the one i chose okay fine fine yeah. and uh, the other thing i heard from jose last week was that uh, i think the question was raised about what sort of tools you would need to install on there. I don't know whether that was a generic question or just a mic. It, or... it, it was. It was more of a generic question, and I think we just lost our. Uh, I, oh, I think we just lost uh, Nikhil. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> he he couldn't he couldn't join for some reason, so he'll um, try again next week. 
I'm really sorry to hear that, especially because he stayed up late. Uh, that was more generic because uh, there is a list. It's in the uh, doc directory of the um, of uh, the board farm repository. Mm -hmm. There is a list there of of re of packages he recommends on the upstream and downstream, and that's to run all the tests that uh, that are in the repo the repository already. Um, but it, the question is, are those the things that are actually going to be needed if we're having pe people, <clears throat> um, a different set of people involved? Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, if you're, uh, that was right for QCA, but, but if you don't want to run tests, you just want to start, you know, uh, you know, do some manual testing or, which you can do with board farm, but it, it's not in a, you know, uh, <laughs> it's a little bit different, but I mean, obviously different set of people are those the things you need. That's more right. my question. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of, lot of ones that I think it's probably like iPerf and things like that. That's probably going to be just fine either way. Um, mm -hmm. But are there others? It was really what I was trying to get at. Okay. So no, no particular, like we need to know it was more just, you know, is there things that should be added kind of thing? Mm -hmm. What's this? Because, no. Particularly, this is more of an issue um, if you're not if you're not doing remotely accessible. If you're making it remotely accessible, obviously on the downstream and upstream device, people aren't going to have root. Um, so right. or yeah, any of the sure. devices. It, so it's like they can't just always you know do app to get mm -hmm. install. Mm -hmm. They'd have to get somebody else to do it. Uh, they would have to get an administrator to do it. Therefore. You know, we want to make sure that we have the things that are needed, so that they Makes don't sense. have to do that as often as possible. You know, don't have to have them come back every day saying, "Hey, I need this. I tomorrow, I need that." And you know, whatever. So, sure, that's what I was getting at. Great, thanks. Yep, no problem. Well, actually, Eric, I, I may okay. have a, a question which um, is is relevant here. Um, sure. In terms of OpenWRT uh, and administering OpenWRT once it's sort of loaded, um, it uses the the Lucy interface, doesn't it? Yep. Yeah. Okay. I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm on sort of dodgy territory here. I know very little about it. All I do yeah. know is that some of the engineering teams who have not got a lot of experience uh, using, or let's say, um, <coughs> creating new screens using oh. the, sort of the Lucy framework, um, they, they found that because they haven't got experience of doing that before, it's been a bit of a technical barrier to mm -hmm. them choosing to do what they need to do using Lucy. So they've kind of uh, created their own uh, screens uh, to facilitate certain setup um, mm. in the context of various projects that we're doing. Do you, do you have any particular pointers for people that are sort of finding this other than what I'd obviously find out there on, on Google or other search engines, uh, are, are there any particularly good getting started guides for, for engineering teams who want to create their own pages in that sort of configuration framework for OpenWRT? Um, I'm trying to think. I, I don't know of any. Um, this was actually one thing that we we had discussed at the that that I'd wanted to get somebody for at the summit in uh October. I had wanted to get a, a Lucy uh a Lucy session and it just never happened that we didn't get a submission from and we couldn't get the 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 folks who had the experience that w they they just couldn't they didn't uh want decide not to submit. Um but yeah this is a known problem. My recommendation is honestly is to look at some of the find a package that does it really well and try to learn from there. I mean, that's yeah. honestly, yeah, it, that's it the default. Yeah. That's, that's what kind of, we assume it's probably the best. Yeah. Way. Yeah. Cause there it, are a few, a few sort of articles out there that show you how to apply, you know, your own bootstrap themes and how to kind of make it look a bit like your own thing rather than as it comes out the box. Yeah. But when it comes to, let's say, you know, uh, facilitating um, particular setup and configuration mm -hmm. in, in your own screens. Um, yeah, it, 
it has been a bit of a technical barrier for us. If anything was to be put together in the future, we'd be interested in that, I think. Absolutely. I mean, if it's possible, it'd be great if you guys, if you folks, obviously this is a question that you've had. Other people have had the same question. If if you, if any of your, um, you know, your team members feel like they, they get a good handle on this, it'd be great if they could, they could even write up a short blog post on it, you know, just saying, here's how we did it and, or add wiki content or anything like that. Um, obviously that's the, you know, that may be a big ask. I mean, obviously they have to focus on engineering, but if there's any way that, that would be awesome because that is a, Lucy is, Lucy's a really cool tool, but is admittedly not as, as is much of OpenWRT is not super well documented. Um, yeah. So yeah, that, that it's a it's unfortunate. A, a, a good one of the things that that I and, and personally I don't know Lucy as well as I as I should. I mean I've I've looked through some of it and um, I've never had a need to like go into super detail. Uh, I know it's very much intended as a way to do a um, to be a light layer over UCI, um, and so. It's good to understand it as in that context, I think. But again, it, it that's a very like that's like a pointer. That's not an explanation. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I know there's a strong desire for the guys to get their heads around, it, but uh, as is often the case, um, it's it's time the extra time. Oh yeah, to be able to to clear that uh, hurdle. Uh, yes. And, we often pushed for time, so we use the approaches which we're more familiar with. Oh no, understandable. I think it always happens. Um, I think I'm just trying to think of what's a what's a really good package, a pretty good package. I don't know if I'd say it's amazing, but it's it they do a pretty good job. Is um the Lucy dash app dash SQM. Um, I don't know if that's best practices, but that is a, they do a um those are from the folks that did. That handled the uh, the buffer bloat work with Cero WRT, they did they did a pretty good job I think from from using it and it seems to fit in pretty well. So maybe there are some things like you can look at that and how they did it. It's it's smaller than having to look at a huge piece of, uh, you know, like all of Lucy to try to figure out what connects with what kind of thing. I don't okay, know. great. Thanks very much for that. that that, that's not a very great pointer, but it's it's what I've got right now. Okay. Um, and I know Lucy's also being rewritten, so um, I, I don't know what kind of uh, what there is to uh, learn, or you know, maybe that that's going to be a little easier. It's not going to be written in Lua, which is an advantage, I think. Um, it's going to be written in. Uh, I think it's going to be entirely JavaScript based, if I remember right. Is there any kind of roadmap or time scale for that? That's <laughs> this is yeah. OpenWRT, so no, unfortunately, there isn't really a, a, a roadmap as far as I can tell. There is work being done, though. I I think it's in. I think it's in one of the OpenWRT repositories. It's like I think it's Lucy two. Um, it's under, yeah. but that's more of a, you can watch the development. Uh, but the goal is they're using RPC, I think it's RPCD, which is the, the, uh, the daemon in, uh, OpenWRT that it's basically just allows you to get JSON back for commands. And they're using that with a, uh, entirely JavaScript front end. Um, and then it's just, uh, making um you know json requests back and forth but uh the, the big problem that they have with lucy right now is that when you're trying to create an html uh file on a very low powered router that often it takes a really long time for the server to create uh complex files um so if you could do that on the client with uh and have it all being done and only just sending the JSON request that gets a lot easier. Um, right. But okay. that yeah. sounds similar to what we're doing, isn't it? 
be uh, interesting to look at that um, Lucy 2 then work. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot know, of other I'll, common threads of other work. That exactly, yeah. because then, you know, you, I don't know whether it's it would be more viable for us to contribute to that. Um, that yeah, that that'd be awesome. I yeah. I, I I don't know where it is and it's it, it looks like it's usable right now, but it's very limited. I think is what I'm gathering, and I'm sure it's very buggy. It's it's I don't even know if it's an alpha stage, but it, from what I looked at, I mean, there's things you can learn from it. Absolutely. I mean, I learned. I I went through there to try to understand how RPCD worked. Um, when I was trying to get a get my head around it. Um, and what was needed to be done. So it, it, it seems like it's at the very least something you can learn from if you're trying to understand something like that. Um, you know. right. Okay. No, thanks for that. Yeah, no problem. All right. I see Nichols come back. Are, are, are you able to uh, <laughs> say anything? <laughs> two. It looks like me. Uh, yeah, number two. No. So. He, he's not got the mic again, but I am talking to him over Skype. <laughs> so, uh, he's just saying he's got the board farm um, set up. He's going to use a couple of CI20s because he's in that Raspberry Pis at the moment. Um, but yep. it should all work. I don't know. Let's see. I think next week we'll have a quite a few, well, quite a bit more um, experience with using it. And uh, awesome. Uh, that'll be good. Yeah. Great. Yeah. We. I'd love to. Love to, uh, you know, um, sh you know, share notes and whatnot. So, yeah, thanks for letting us know, you know, where to put issues and stuff like that. And we'll, oh, we'll have another look because I think I, I, I personally haven't read all the documentation and stuff, so I'm probably uh, <laughs> sounding there, stupid. No, no, there. To be honest, there isn't that much documentation. I mean, it was, uh, you know, Mike's <clears throat> Mike's done an amazing job, but admittedly, the. Uh, getting the documentation out there and do all, all that stuff. It was, uh, um, he was limited in time when he originally did it. So it was, it was, it was pretty basic. Um, so. Okay. No worries. Yeah. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> My daughter's just arrived. <laughs> I'm mute. Well, hello to her. It's awesome. <laughs> we're, we're very family friendly here. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. Hey there. <laughs> What's her name, Paul? Uh, this is Sophia. She's one of a, a twin, a twins, <laughs> two-year-old well, twins. Well, hello, so Sophia. Welcome to the world of open source. Oh it's God, wonderful. <laughs> She's very excited by it. <laughs> I'm sure. We like to get started early. Absolutely. <laughs> important. <laughs> okay, I think that's it for me. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's it for me us. too. Yeah. Thanks for Awesome. Much. Well, thank Thanks, you sir. very much. And uh and sorry, uh Nikhil that or Nikhil that you couldn't make it to the meeting, but uh thank you for uh thank you for attempting. We hope we can uh talk to you next week. So thank you everyone. Cheers. Thanks. Thanks, sir. And thank you for joining Sophia. <laughs> it's like, bye. Yes, it's a pleasure to meet bye. you. Bye. <laughs> bye.